that. Yeah, and one thing that I was thinking about, something you mentioned earlier, uh, Phil mentioned earlier, was so, like service games and all that. And I was thinking like live service, like oh man, I don't know, like like I get where like maybe the benefits of live service games, but like usually most of the time those usually don't really work out in the long term for multiple reasons. Um, but well, for one like you need the money i'm pretty sure they have the money but you need the money like maintain it like constantly giving out constant like content like constant in a yeah. lot of cases you don't own the game at the end of it and i know yeah. that's really weird to say to i don't know the birthplace of xbox game pass yeah um but at the end of the day you know let's say you pay for it and i mean because th think about um a newer one which everyone's talking trash about right now, and so not just to talk trash about or anything, it's, it's not about that, but just really as an example, is the Suicide Squad, uh, the one oh, yeah. by uh, Rocksteady. Yeah. Um, a publisher great for making single player games, yeah. and story driven single player games, with um, even getting into like making really great vast worlds uh, with them. Um, or, you know, highly detailed and uh, lively, um, just from everything they've jam-packed into it. Yeah. Now, with the new game, granted, I haven't played it, but I've seen a lot about it. And the re reason I haven't played it or give too much interest to it is just from some of the stuff I've heard and has been confirmed about it, about being live service. and um, Constantly online. Yeah. So, yeah and, just... and the thing is, if you look at the history of a lot of developers, um, that stuff just does not last. And yeah. so you have, and, and, and you do have people yeah. that go back to their old games constantly. Yeah. Um, and whether you can say it's for nostalgia, however you want to say it is, just don't discount it. Yeah. Because it's what they decide to do and it is gaming and it's whether it's pastime, whether it's people trying to get into uh, a, a different mindset so they can relax. Uh, it, it's valid and I, long story short what i'm trying to say is um with the way the trend is going in gaming and digital media um you won't be able to do that yeah and so that that's that's basically what i'm saying here when it comes to live service games even things like game pass also another thing about live service games is and this is just a, the cold reality of the situation people usually don't have ton, time to play the same game like here's the thing it, it gets to a point unless you like have like constantly like just fresh content um people will get bored with it very quickly like granted um this on uh, suicide squad kill the justice league it does have a roadmap like it does have a roadmap and everything but uh the question is um at, like will people keep playing though and that's the thing about live service like i, I think if you just focus on making like singular standalone games that are enjoyable that does have does have some replay value that probably be better than a live service it might be cheaper too um but yeah like with the last service model, like just make standalone games and that individually will probably make as much as not more money. Cause like now people have more variety of like games to play instead of playing the same, basically the same gameplay loop over and over again. Like a lot of these last service games. Trying to grind it out and stuff by yeah. filling it with things that really just don't have substance. Yeah. Um, and the thing is, and I think the reason why you see so many games like this crop up it's mainly because of you know what i'm about game i'm about to bring up well fortnite pretty much fortnite's been around since what 2017 i can't even remember it's been around for a really long time and ever and, and ever since these um these co companies seen like the like the profit margins and like how much revenue they're bringing in pretty much all of them was like oh, i want a piece of that pie and it's like yeah so now we're just all gonna make live service games but here's the thing that is a very special case um fortnite it, it was a lot it had a lot of great things going on fortnite is a completely different beast from yeah. and it is it's a completely different beast from when it when it started but it's also a completely different beast from what it was two years ago yeah it's it, it it's it's ever evolving like the fact that um and, and it, it takes a great bit of um sorry it takes a great bit of investment i mean the fact that uh, I don't I don't know the years exactly, maybe like 2021, between 2021 2022, uh, when they invested or bought Harmonix, which was the maker of a lot of rhythm games, including the most popular one, Rock Band. Yeah. Um, an investment in that, an investment probably in, in 2020, so, 2021. They also worked with um, Rocket League with Psyonix. Yeah. And yeah. I think that was 20, uh, I think that, that was, was 2020. Really or, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's merging at this point. But um, yeah. It's investments like those that is, it, 
it essentially gives it more of a platform where people are kind of living in these services, not living, but trying to say like they're spending a lot more time in it. And these live services kind of making it a, a, almost like a necessity because there's a lot to do here. Yeah, it gets to the point. And when, even when they started um, letting players like make their own levels and like and all that, it's starting to become like its own platform in itself to the point that even Disney themselves are like investing like 1.5 billion, I think, if I remember correctly, into like um, Fortnite to like build like a meta, what was it, like a metaverse or something like that. And and yeah, this is like really recent. And too. this is the thing. It, it wasn't something that just kind of propped up overnight. In order for them to even have people invest in them, not just invest, but in order for people to have uh, to make their own content and for it to start generating itself, what was the Epic? Um, well, not Epic Launcher, but the actual uh, the engine. Engine. Oh, yes. yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. It's the Unreal Engine. I mean, Unreal Engine. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and the fact that that is. Um, like a completely different investment hole in this. Yes, yeah. and there's a <laughs> yeah. lot of money going in, coming in from that too. Although not as much as they probably would like it to be. Yeah. Um, but you have that where it's available to the public, to where you can basically make stuff for it, and it allows. It, it, it's like Roblox if you think about it. The way like the level creation and all that stuff like that. It's and, like and Minecraft. It's yeah. like if um yeah. you were able to have GIMP be as popular as Photoshop. But the fact that it was free and everyone had access to it that was interested in it. Yeah. Um, and essentially be able to create something that was as meaningful as having an environment and objects and stuff yeah. that your friends can play with. Yeah, like go and like going back um to like the point of like these companies chasing that, it's like here's the thing, it probably would have been more beneficial to like not worry about that. Like I said, with the standalone games. Like like I get it, there's a lot of money in it, but like they're also like Epic Games is very fortunate in their position that they're at now. Like they managed to capture the audience very quickly. It's ever it's ever growing mainly due to the fact they keep working with a lot of like major IPs that are very popular, and so it it always constantly brings in new players and like it keeps the existing players there as well. And, and, and yeah. not even just uh, major IPs, but relevant IPs. I mean, mm. especially when yeah. Marvel with uh, Marvel was at its height. If you can argue if it is right now or not. Yeah. But when you know when you have the Avengers and everything, and Spider Man's movies coming out, and you have Spider Man in there, and you also have Thanos in there, and it, it was topical to what was going on at the time. And so you essentially, in a term in wrestling or in other things too, when something is really hot and going in terms of the crowd really liking it, um, sometimes you can give the rub to other things, which th that's the term I'm saying. Where other th like if you want to get more of that thing uh in terms of like thanos or spider-man like i mentioned as well as all the anime characters that were coming in like goku which has always been like the number one anime uh character uh has been able to stay at that spot yeah um you know and then now you can play that character and those characters and have special events while other things that are relative to what they're doing in other mediums is still going on yeah then it's a full package and it's true true uh brand integration uh, or the other word I'm looking for, where basically you just um, cooperation. That's not the word I'm looking for, but hopefully uh, you understand what I mean. Yeah. Um, and so that helps with this popularity. Not to mention with the rise of streaming, uh, the rise of Twitch Prime, if you know what I mean. Um, yeah. And just the rise of Twitch as a whole. There was a lot of uh, things that had to um, essentially, even if it was manufactured, there was still a spark that allowed it to go as, as further than really anyone was, was imagining. This is like one of the few examples of like a, a like a game like growing organically, basically. Like instead of like trying to force it, they put they put the investment in and actually make it grow naturally. Like, yeah. So I mean granted there there are some uh, certain patterns they use, but that's that's what sets the point, um, to make that happen. But yeah, um and that's like a whole separate thing. But yeah.